All right, it's time to actually get started on fixing this RAM. Um, Snow One RAM, 2500, uh, standard cab, long bed, four wheel drive, uh, single wheel truck, obviously. It has the 5.9 Magnum gas engine in it. Probably not the most desirable, but you know that's what we got, and the truck has served us really well. Uh, originally, it was an automatic truck, and as these automatics tend to do, it went south. And since I was in between projects, I happen to have a uh, NV4500 five-speed laying on the garage floor, and it really needed a refresh. I had cleaned it up uh, for the project it was in, but it was a junkyard find. So I went through that, and I converted it from a two-wheel drive NV4500 to a four-wheel drive Chrysler MB4500 because it's actually the cases and internals and everything are the what are they the 94 to 96 Chevrolet uh, it's the ones that had the Chevrolet specific uh, mounting flange across the front of it that still uses the old butterfly flange I think uh, easy modification on the Chrysler bell housing you can go in and uh, I just went in and weld filled uh, the casting gap in the bell housing and then drilled and tapped it so that the bolts would go through the transmission and, and actually bolt to the bell housing and got the right ECU to go in it um, this is an all-wheel disc brake truck it's four-wheel ABS but the magnum heads are starting to show signs of being cracked uh, it's it, not too bad uh, it's got about 145,000 miles on it and I said trucks been pretty good I uh, thought about doing like diesel swap or some of the other things, but just price wise and logistics, this was going to be the least expensive and quickest. So, you know, you always got to pick two. Um, it was previously in an accident at some point before we bought it. There's leftover condenser damage, but it, you know what? The condenser works. I'm not going to mess with that. The radiator is going to get swapped out getting engine quest heads on it i've got a huge cam to go in it it's not a very big cam but it's one of theirs that works with the ecu so you don't have to have it on a tuner or dyno it or anything like that you can just plug it play it go um i got some stainless steel ebay headers so we'll see how that works they're supposed to bolt up to the y pipe eh, probably a 50 50 chance that they'll do that uh, i've been sitting on a new used yeah new used but used good condition fuel rail because this one's seen better days a bit rusty new injectors got to replace the fuel pump assembly because pressure regulators going bad you got to prime it a couple times before it starts once it starts it's fine and it actually runs appropriate pressures just um, the check valve to keep to keep pressure in the line uh, when the fuel pump isn't running is is just not there uh, rebuilt transfer case Rebuilt rear Dana 60 with a new track lock. Mostly rebuilt front Dana 60. Would like to actually convert it away from the CAD. I, I'm not a big fan of central axle disconnects. I think it's kind of useless personally. But, you know, hey, engineers like it. So that's what we get. Um, Got to pull the hood off. Let's see, can I get back far enough with the other car in the way? Probably not. Okay, well. I'm gonna pull the hood off because this is all the lifting mechanism I got. So I need to be able to come straight down and out. Um, this will all be done alone. So uh, we'll see how ingenious I am with that. What I'm, tr I'm gonna try to do is sling it in such a way that I can use the the use the hoist on the floor over there use the hoist on the frame to pick it up and maneuver it and hopefully not destroy my windshield yes it's it's a little cold in southern Ohio right now that's all to make for fun fun days um, but yeah this will just be a this is kind of gonna be a long-term project I mean hoping it doesn't take so long but uh, yeah gotta come in I'm 
I don't think I'm recovering and taking out the condenser. I think I'm just going to try to maneuver it to work around it, maybe hang it on the ground or something like that. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens. But this brace has to come out. Uh, radiator, overflow tank, washer tank, disconnect battery, probably pull the battery and put it in the garage. Uh, air system has to come out. Wiring harness has to be taken off, you know the drill. You're, you're pulling an engine, it's all gotta come apart whether you want it to or not. So we'll see what the... I always love when the uh, drain valves don't line up to anything and uh, there's nowhere to hook a hose or anything like that too so it just kind of opened up and yeah you know you know the drill but as you can see right here more damage from when it wasn't repaired and then we've never had overheat problems or anything like that I put a new water pump on it uh, shoot long time ago when we first bought it i guess we've had this truck like i don't know 15 years we've had it for a long time um and it's starting to weep around the tank i did buy a new radiator this time around i figured i'll, I'll put a new radiator another new water pump uh it's gonna get a new fan blade and another new fan clutch i think i even got a new belt and this one's relatively new but 
you know, you try to get a hold of a lot of the while you're in there. Uh, ended up having to turn the camera off and recruit some help to get the uh, get the hood off, but the hood's off now. Um, hood's off. Denser's loose. I'm gonna take I think this support beam out next. Might take. I don't know. I don't really want to break out the fan clutch tool and pull and beat the fan clutch off, but I might have to just to get the shroud and the tanks off and then uh, work that way. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Radiator's out and finding some more damage. Got a little mud dauber nest starting to grow. That's the other side I pointed out. I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, there was no airflow through there. Um, very little, at least. That's that's pretty rough. Uh, so, luckily, or thankfully, I was smart enough to order a radiator, and that'll be replaced throughout this endeavor. Let's get all my Greta points uh, lost for today. We're down here, uh, thinking I'll probably end up having to order some power steering hoses. Uh, maybe a new cooler, I don't know. These coolers hold up really well. Ford used to use pretty much an identical cooler. They just mounted it to the back of the pump and those things last forever. This thing's always had a little bit of some steering and this truck, this generation of truck, always has some steering issue let's see i don't think i can get the camera in there but maybe you can hear that i don't know but that yeah i'm not gonna be able to get the camera in there but that is a uh, really loose steering shaft and i know some of these trucks had that problem doesn't seem to be the rag joint though it seems to be coming from uh the dash side I know back in fleet use, we had a bunch of Ram vans in the same uh, year range. And those had a uh, small, was it like a, like a W joint um, steering shaft that connected the bottom of the steering column to the, like the floor output. Um, those used to go bad all the time. The earlier ones had a weird ball and socket cup design uh, you could actually take it apart and rebuild them they were I don't know I found those to be obnoxious I didn't I didn't really care for them they were not the easiest thing to have to rebuild they were kind of in my opinion some people may think they're super easy um, the later ones it was just a, a dropout piece you take two bolts out and, and you're done I think I'll probably be checking inside to see if that's what the issue is and see what's available. Hopefully I don't have to build a custom one. I'd really like to be able to get away with just buying, either rebuilding this or just buying a new one that uh, gets the job done. Balancer's not too bad, I guess, for an 01. Aluminum's corroding. Pulley's funny looking, but it doesn't have, doesn't have any grooves or gouges, so we're just gonna let that one go. Uh, so yeah. Guess it's time to get stuff out of the way and keep working.
stopping for today. Uh, it's actually pretty early. I didn't want to stop. Um, the point where I can set up my um, chain fall <clears throat> on the frame and try to figure out where I want to hook it up to the engine and things like that. There's no lifting mounts on this engine. Um, so i got to figure something out with that. Then I realized I used to share a regular old cherry picker engine hoist with a buddy of mine. Um, when I moved, well, actually before I moved, I just gave it to him. I wasn't doing anything, hadn't done engine stuff in, in years outside of a professional shop. Nothing at home anymore. So I was just like, here, do what you want with it. I think he ended up giving it to his kid in Louisiana or something. And, uh, it just, it all, it all went away. So I have my... Uh, a lot of people call them a come along, but it's a lever action chain hoist. Um, it, it's lifted rating. It's not just for pulling. Come alongs are only for pulling. If you ever get into any, anyway, anyway, um, keep looking at the truck. Like it's, it's gonna roll away. I don't know. Um, so I don't have a regular engine hoist. I didn't think anything of it. I do have my my chain fall. I go digging through, I'm going to put some straps on the frame and run a shackle and everything like that. And I realized that my chain fall is only a three quarter ton chain fall. Which probably isn't bad. You know, that's what, three, three quarters of a ton is 1,500 pounds, right? Um, but I should be, and I should be able to do it, but. Uh, I got real frustrated with one of the bolts on the engine mount, passenger side engine mount, just thought coming out. Uh, for a minute there, I thought maybe somebody had welded the washer to the frame plate. Uh, it was just rubber. And I'm thinking what happened is the frame mount, the, the engine mount, the isolator part, actually collapsed in and was putting that bolt in a bind. And that's why it wouldn't come out. The driver's side came out, came out simple, no, no big deal. Uh, but... That's about where I'm at, and it was one of those frustrating things where it took probably a half hour, 45 minutes to get out what should have been, you know, a five-minute bolt uh, at that. Um, so it's time for a break. It's time for cold snacks. It's time to just stop and back up. Let's go look and see what we got here. Hopefully it's not too much of a shaky cam. Uh, so... Yep, everything's torn off. Bed's in the back, hood's in the back. Uh, things that were noticed, again, you know, the power steering lines are looking a little sad. Um, they could probably use, use some loving. Uh, this guy, I gotta figure something out. It shouldn't have that much slop in it. The let's see before I get into anything else, can we can we focus? There we go. This guy is broken. Um, I don't know if I did it when I was taking stuff apart or if it's been broken for a while. I get temperature readings, and they're relatively accurate, but it's just the plastic's broken. Um, I do have, like I said, I do have a new used fuel rail, so this one will go in the scrap metal pile. I do have new injectors for it. Uh, my concern is the corrosion on this intake manifold. I'm thinking I'm probably going to end up having to buy an intake manifold, which isn't the highlight of my day uh, at all. Um, I broke, I don't know if it's seeable, I broke the vacuum connection uh, breather that goes in this side of the valve cover, so I got to order one of those. Also, I don't know if anybody's more well versed with these than I am, but on the fuel injectors, so that's that's one of them, and that's the clip style. And then we got this guy's busted. This guy's busted, and. That guy's still got his lock on it, and he's still got the button, so that's always good. But over here on the passenger side, we have 
same thing. No, nope, I'm wrong. Ah, silly me. I kept looking at the wrong plug while I was screwing around. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought I had mix match plugs. Oh well. Now the whole world can laugh. It's fine. Uh, let's see. What else got to get done? So, I'm back up and regroup on the, uh, on the hoist. Probably going to use it. For some reason I had it in my head before I got talking to the camera that it was only like 700 pounds instead of 1,500 pounds. Um, it's been kind of a long, cold day today. Planning on... Uh, when we get this out and start going through it, okay, looking, looking down here at this timing cover, it too may need to be replaced based on the corrosion. I'd really like to get this out in the next day or two just so I can start getting an add-on list together and get parts ordered. You know, I'm out in the boonies and uh, you know there is no two-day Amazon delivery out here. Everything takes everything takes about a week. Um, there are some auto parts stores and things nearby, but honestly, it's terrible. I went to a better one, or at least what the internet considers the the good one of the big three. Um, older gentlemen seemed nice. Their find it yourself wiper blade lookup was was down. Go and let them look up wiper blades. Let them sell them to me at twenty five dollars a piece, where I find the exact same Bosch ones on Rock Auto for six dollars a piece. Um, and he gets the connection wrong. And, and that's fine. You know, there's there's twenty five different connections, but kind of why I like just looking my own stuff up and doing it myself. Uh, just just is. Um, but. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up tomorrow with a little bit better, a little bit better stuff going on. All right.